Hello, my name is Tridar, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a Grand Roman Estate in Minecraft. Let's get started. So the first thing we will do is take a quick tour of the exterior. You can see there is a triumphal entrance gateway down here in front of the estate. It is also surrounded by many formal gardens and trimmed trees, as well as some pavilion buildings to the side here. Apart from the main body of the house, there are also some guardian lions, a main fountain, and around back here we have a couple of smaller buildings along with a pool and colonnaded courtyard area with a small glass roof pavilion and a couple of statues on either side as well as one in the middle and of course we have a few stone uh, fire braziers down there as well so let us do a very quick tour of the inside so you can get a good look at the building to decide whether you want to build it or not i have finished these buildings here by the way so if we go in here we see that we have a nice barrel vaulted area this would be suitable for some horse stables or perhaps for your animals that's what this is intended for but over here we have a stairwell which will take you up to the formal rooms up here in this section of course we have a fireplace here and some more doors here a central room and a couple more fireplaces and lights down here as well on this end but they are all accessed via the main stairwell up here now for these rooms i'm showing them as large but if you want to you can um, subdivide these off lengthways with smaller rooms if you so choose to do that so let us leave this building here and go and take a look very quickly inside the main house itself. Now there are a couple of ways to get into the house. The main way is down here underneath the colonnade and through the doors here we have a ground floor down here with several rooms flanking off from that. A second floor up here as well with yet more rooms. Up the main stairwell here it takes us to the main all of the house in here with uh, fireplaces on both ends and uh, glass chandeliers and we have uh, smaller rooms over here suitable for use as a dining room or as a grand library that's what I would choose to build here and we also have a stairwell that parts and goes off up here to these sides of the house which you can have your main bedroom in these areas around here and up these stairs again takes us to the top level which we have a few more and smaller rooms up here sort of like an attic area or a place where you could put things that you don't really use too much up there so with that quick tour out of the way Let's go and take a look outside here. Of course, we have some uh, potted ferns around here as well. And you can go down the stairs here and down to access the main pool and the back courtyard here and the glass roofed pavilion back here. Of course, this is all done in fine Roman style. And it is, of course, surrounded on the back here by even more formal gardens in all of these areas. So let me give you a good sort of top-down view of the entire structure here. As you can tell, this is going to be a mega base of sorts. I would classify it as that. And it's no doubt going to be a long tutorial because there are a lot of fine detail areas that I'm going to have to explain to you in sequence. All right, so as you can see, the bedrock display is quite long. Even all the signs aren't loading in. So we are going to take a look at what we've got here. So you will need 8,139 blocks of diorite. Most of that is for the columns and the arches and the entablatures. 
of 15,738 blocks of andesite. Uh, the vast majority of this is going to be used for the pathways that are outside here, I believe. You're also going to need 9,637 blocks of grass or dirt and have the grass spread onto it. 29,911 blocks of cobblestone. I hope you've got several cobblestone farms. You're going to be needing them. As well as a big forest because you need 9,180 spruce planks. Uh, 5,607 blocks of basalt. Of course, um, in this build, I have used bedrock because I like the textures a bit better for most of the floors in here. But remember, when I show you in the tutorial where I have used bedrock here, you need to be using basalt because if you look, if you stand back a bit, it's, it's close enough. And you also be needing 12,261 spruce tree trunks. 726 oak tree trunks. I believe these are all for the ornamental trees. As are these oak leaves here, 4,290 of those. Uh, 5,319 spruce leaves. These are for the hedges in the formal gardens. 997 blocks of lapis. I've used these for some of the walls and some of the smaller bedrooms. 82 smooth stone slabs. 1,634 cobblestone slabs, 1,886 black stone slabs, 1,035 stone brick slabs, 4,237 blocks of obsidian, which I have used primarily for the floors along with the bedrock, but if you don't wish to gather this much obsidian, you may replace this with uh, polished black stone, would be an acceptable substitution for that. You also need 7,266 cobblestone stairs, 2,311 blocks of netherrack. This is for the mulch and the formal gardens. You can see a bit of that laid off behind me here. 12 blocks of glowstone for the chandeliers, 1,359 light blue stained glass blocks, 328 trapdoors of your choice. I prefer spruce. 49,000 421 stone brick. I believe this is by far the highest block count of everything we have, but fully half of this building is going to be made of stone bricks. So you also need 1,560 chiseled stone bricks, not lodestones. This is my chiseled stone brick texture that I use. 7,351 stone brick stairs. Uh, an optional 85 lily pads if you wish to put those in the pool that I showed you for a little decoration, but they're not necessary. 989 full blocks of black stone, 3062 nether brick fences, which I have used as the lattice work in all the windows here. However, I have also changed my texture on this so that I can have uh, black stone fences. But if you don't like how the nether brick appears in the windows, my suggestion to you is to use dark oak fences instead would be an acceptable substitution there, just something that's really dark in color. You also need 84 black stone stairs, 3,231 spruce slabs, 2,166 spruce stairs, 326 cobblestone walls, 1,217 light blue stained glass panes for all the windows, 400 blocks of dark prismarine for some of the walls, 125 large ferns, 70 spruce fences, 138 dark oak doors, my favorite type of door, 9,268 red nether bricks used uh, almost exclusively for the roof and some of the walls in the lower sections. 751 torches. Although, if you are building this in survival, I expect you will be needing many, many more torches than that. And uh, one infinite water source to fill up the fountains. Alright, let us now go over here and take a look at phase one of the build. This is going to take quite a bit of explanation and measuring out, so you can get all of these correct. So let's go over here and take a look at what the dimensions are for the base. 
Now, in total, the base is 137 blocks wide, going that way, and 212 blocks long, going back that way. And that is to uh, this block right here, which, let me go over here to this second phase and explain that a bit better. Those dimensions are from the wall here, which is outside this pathway, so it's going to be that block there, which is right here, and that's going to be going on the other side, all the way over to, and it's only halfway, all the way over to uh, this block here. It's going to be that there, and that holds true for the same, all the way back here to these other corners. All right, so with that clarified, let me first start with a good top-down view of the front of this here. As you can see, we are already laying in the nether rack for the formal gardens, and as well as a cobblestone foundation for the main house itself, and the back uh, colonnade and pool area back here. I will also go and, re and remark, this is dug down one block deeper than what I'm showing. The, the water level should be here, but some of the lapis and obsidian is being used as decoration down here beneath the water, by the way, so don't let that uh, throw you. So let's uh, go back here and start measuring out some of these dimensions. Now, before I get too far along, let me also say that this house is designed to be symmetrical around a center line, okay? So if we build something like this over here, you want to go on the other side of that center line and build the same thing, just mirrored and facing each other, like that there. So uh, to say that again, this side over here is just a mirror image of this side over here. So as I go through the tutorial, I will probably only focus on one side here, but recognize that the other side is the inverse image of what I'm showing you over there, okay? All right. I think this is going to be a, quite a long tutorial series just with the amount of explanation I'm going to have to do. So prepare yourself. If you have some snacks or anything, you probably want to go ahead and get those. And let us begin. So all the paths that I'm going to be showing you around here are three blocks wide. Three blocks there and three blocks there. Once you have measured out a big box with these dimensions here, on the inside of that, you're going to start digging in your paths and laying down your grass and nether rack. And the nether rack over here, this is two blocks wide here and two blocks here. And then you want to start banding in some nether rack as mulch for the first of your formal gardens. And I think the nether rack is high contrast enough that if I uh, hold over this and you just pause the video, you can see the block pattern that you should follow. And I should also count out the length of the first formal garden, which from here all the way back here, well here is going to be 27 blocks is going to be that dimension. And the width of that to the first pathway over here is going to be 24 blocks there. So once you have laid out those dimensions, you can go ahead and fill in the rest of the area with your andesite, or if you choose to use just plain cobblestone or whatever different material for the pathway, you can do that as well. If you feel like it, you can also mix in a mossy cobblestone along with the andesite and some smooth stone to give it a bit more texture, but I did not do that for this particular t tutorial because I thought it would be too confusing. Now, that is the first formal garden on the site here, as you can see. So let us now measure out the distance for the second and largest formal garden here. And that from this block over here to this block over here is going to be 33 blocks in width. And the distance to the main feature over here, this looks like it's going to be five blocks there, and it should be also be five blocks on 
this side. So you're going to be making a rectangle in the middle, but you want to cut out the scalloped edges, as you see done here with the nether rack. And in the middle, you want to build out a nether rack circle, as you see done here. But also, let me count all the way back to this point over here. 53 blocks to get you all the way back there, which will also coincidentally give you the next measurements for the pathway across here. And this pathway is going to be five blocks wide here. And there's going to be the setbacks for the next formal garden here, which is going to have our lion statue in the middle of that. And also, the dimensions of the main roadway that's going to be coming across here. Let's measure that. So remember, I talked about the center line here. This is going to be going straight through the base. So from your center line, you want to have how many blocks? It's going to be one, two, three blocks that way, and the same over this way as well which should be a total of a nine blocks wide for the main roadway into your base. And of course, on the other side, as I said, you want to mirror the formal gardens in exactly the same way as you did on the other side, now that you know the dimensions and everything to the center line. So the next dimension we need to lay out is this next garden back here and the width of that here to here is going to be 17 blocks of that way and to get all the way back here is going to be 27 blocks back that way so you want to use those dimensions and make yourself a rectangle there then two blocks in on each side you then want to lay in some netherrack mulch as you see done there and around that, back here, you want to give yourself three blocks for the next andesite pathway. Three blocks all the way around. And back here, this is going to be the beginnings of the foundation for our, our main house. But there is also a small detail of a two by one area of a band of grass and another rack that goes across the front, as you see here. And I don't think I need to give uh, measurements on that exactly, do I? I probably do. From the back corner here, going to be that many blocks to get you to the front of the section there, which will be the back of the main courtyard here. And our fountain is going to be going in over there somewhere. So the dimensions, if you take a one block setback, from the back here and extend that across this way, it will give you the next point we can take a measurement off of for uh, this formal garden back here, which I believe it should be the same width as that one was uh, that we started with, the very first one, but the length is going to be a bit different. So as you can see, if you extend this pathway all the way back, it is uh, going straight through the entire base here. It's a straight shot along that way and this way. So you want to go ahead and lay that in. And it's also a um, big rectangle around these sides too. Inside of the walls, there is a three by three pathway that will be going along the entire perimeter of the base. I think if I go over here and get some altitude, you can see that a little bit better, what I'm talking about there. So, with that in mind, let us now, let us now take some more measurements from that. So, as I said, the width is, is the same, but the length to get all the way back here is going to be... 43 blocks for that distance there. And inside of that, you want to put down the netherrack mulch, as you see described here. And once you have done that, we need to lay down another large 
foundation of andesite. And I think for this last garden on the site here, we should take uh, measurements from the back. Now, as I've said, this pathway here is extending all the way from the front, right? So the width of this, you already know because it will be very confined by what you have done so far. So we just need to measure out the length from back there to up here. And that is going to be 38 blocks to get you that distance there. And while we are back here, I suppose we should start measuring out the garden sections that are going to be at the back here. And I think we will do some of this from the center line, which as I've talked about, your center line is running through this section here by the way, that we started all the way up there, that goes straight through the base, and it ends back here. And it looks like that there is a little bit too much uh, netherrack. That should probably be grass. That's a mistake in the reference model. But this distance from here to, I think let's go from the center line, is going to be uh, that many blocks there. Nine blocks there for that cobblestone, so on the 10th block, that is going to be the grass here. And that will extend all the way over to the other side of this pathway here, which you've been building from the front, remember? So that's the other side of that pathway, so you shouldn't need that dimension, but you are going to need the other ones around here, which I'm not sure we can do until I get to the next phase there, actually. But it should only be uh, two blocks of grass here, and then I think we're going to have some things that we build on top of that there. So the width of the nether rack here is going to be, what is that, seven, seven blocks? Seven blocks that way, and on over that this way also. I believe this is also going to be a seven block width. And that continues. You want to leave two block space and then a pathway. Three blocks wide, then a two block space. A more nether rack, as you see done here. And you want to run that for how many blocks? From here, here, to here is going to be 17 blocks there. And then the next distance is going to be from here all the way down there is going to be 28 blocks, and then a three block wide pathway. And then I believe from here, all the way back down to the edge of this other pathway, which you should have already constructed, is going to be however many blocks long that is. And I put a band of netherrack, as you see, done there, because our main house is going to be extending over into this area as well. So let me give you a good top-down view of this quadrant of the back area. And I think I should also give you some dimensions here for the pool. Uh, let's see, what would be the easiest way to do that? We're just going to have to count it all the way back from the center line back here. From that point there to the edge of the diorite on a pool is going to be 31 blocks. Should be that measurement there. And then to get to the side corners of the pool, from there all the way over to, I think uh, that block there is going to be 14 blocks that way. And as you can tell from the pattern over the pool here, it is just a simple square. So you want to build that out with the scalloped edges of the pool, as you see done here with the diorite. And at this stage, if you, if you prefer, you can also fill it in with uh, water as well. And I don't think the other things around here are going to matter. I think that little bit of cobble there doesn't, doesn't matter. And this is uh, going to be the rest of the foundation for the house area in the middle here as well. So you can probably fill that in with just any block or probably leave it 
you may be able to leave it hollow because as you can see we're going to be putting the main foundation on in the next phase over here so that was an awful lot of measuring and looking at the top-down view I would suggest that you do your best to get the measurements correct but if you are building this in survival and you have already leveled out the entire rectangle the next thing you need to do is fill it in with everything you see done here which I imagine just getting this going is going to take you quite a lot of time but it is a, a mega base after all so I believe you know what you are in store for alright now we can finally move on to phase two after all that very complex explanation or some even more complex explanation which is going to involve uh, all of the formal gardens and the foundations for the houses and everything down here as well so I'm going to do my best to explain these things to you uh, one thing you can do as a rule pretty much is to construct the garden walls as you see done here on either side of the three block and the site pathways that you've made and you do that by a bit of stone bricks here with a, co a cobblestone slab on that you go in general you go three blocks but in some of the corners here I've had to cheat a little bit and do two blocks there but let me give you a good uh, side view of the general patterns and layouts of those blocks here I think for this phase this is probably the first thing that you want to be constructing you can see here's this uh, main pathway that goes all the way to the back down there and the pathway along the side here which goes to the front main entrance and this is going to be the foundation for the triumphal entryway into your base and it is three blocks wide by uh, how many blocks long six looks like it's going to be six blocks which you're with you're doing with a bit of cobblestone and your first bit of diorite as you see done there and let me uh, go through here and give you a good side view as we go through here of all the garden walls and their measurements there's that side there here is the view from the back here of the main garden over here this is going to be the foundation for one of the pavilions which we will talk about somewhat later i give you a view here of uh, this garden area there I believe there's actually it looks like there's a mismeasurement here it shouldn't be one block usually I don't do that uh, you should move move this over here and then put a half slab in, in that section whenever you do that to fix my mistake I'm very sorry over here you want to make the main area as you see done there with those walls and here is the side area back here and all of this should be defined by all of the complex measurements that we laboriously did in the previous phase uh, I suppose the garden walls here are can be somewhat forgiving in a sense uh, it looks like here's another spot where I should have moved that I should have moved that farther back here as well no, but they are just garden walls. It's not really all that necessary. So you can see the pattern patterns here, and the pattern from the front is extending all the way to the back to enclose your entire base. Uh, for this, also, if you want to extend this design up a, another couple of blocks it would serve as a, an effective uh, wall around your entire base if you want to make something a bit more ornamental but uh, I did not do that on the reference model here so here's a view of the wall configuration on the back and the side along here Looks like there's another mistake there's this one is four four blocks wide I think that was how I solved the problem of getting around a one block wall there 
So they kind of uh, have to stretch and compress to fit the available space. And the block measurements. And here is a bit more of the walls around here on these sides and those sides. And when you get along here, we're going to start putting in the foundation for the courtyard at the back, which I think we will, we will, we will work our way to the back. But for now, let us return here to the front and talk about the uh, formal gardens. Okay, so let's start with a uh, top-down view. As you can see, what I've done here inside all the walls that you built, you then want to put a band of spruce leaves or whichever leaf block you prefer and have a lot of to use for your formal gardens. And you want to do that according to uh, these patterns here. I think if I just hover over this, it should be enough for you to get the gist of that because you can see that the nether rack that you should have already placed in could serve as a guide to help you uh, place those blocks accurately. And in the little cutouts of the scallops on the corners here, you then want to place in some of your oak tree trunks as you see done there because these are going to be all of the bases for our trim trees that we will be placing. And once you've done one of those corners, most of the corners follow the same designs as you see done here. You put in a ring of spruce leaves and then a two block thick layer behind that and then a bit of grass and then two blocks again. And then you hit the nether rack and then there's one more band of spruce leaves as you see done here for this section of the formal gardens and the back of this is a mirror image of the front there. And you can also measure out the distances for the trees here. I believe these are should all be the same distance apart from each other which looks like that is going to be seven blocks apart from each other spaced all the way back. And in the middle here, you then want to put a detail of some stone bricks and some cobblestone stairs and some ferns. Oh, I destroyed that one. The, this fern over here in front and the back of that one. And a ring of ferns in the middle here around your ring of hedges in the middle. And some more cobble and stairs here, as you see done there. It's just a little um, small stone decorative feature in the middle of the formal garden. Over here in this formal garden you are doing the same hedge design with a one block thick and then two blocks. And on the corners here you want to put a double fern. And in the middle of that you want to put the base of cobble and stone bricks for what is going to be the lion statue which is going to be five blocks wide by however long that extends to the back there, which should be defined by all the measurements that we previously did. Now let's continue. I think if I hover over this, you can see the block count for the main fountain here. This is done by it's just a cobblestone here, but on top of that, you want to put some slabs there. And this is sitting on your center line, of course, which is coming through the main road here. And uh, from this there, let me give you good visual indication of how far back that is from the garden wall that you built. You should be able to pause the video and uh, build that section there. So once you do that, you want to build out the uh, garden wall around the front here and uh, not at the back. See, that's the foundation for the main house, which we will take a look at a bit later. So back here, as you can see, we have the foundation for another archway. Remember, there are two of these on either side of the main house that will flank these areas there. And I think, i just give you a good uh, oblique angle here. You can use the block counts that you made for the garden walls to get the measurements all the way to the back of those, I think. It's, uh, it's slightly off-center, by the way. 
from the house. This is going to be sort of a uh, center line for the house going through this way there. But the archway itself is like six blocks long. So it is an odd number, so it sort of uh, interfaces with that uh, rather crudely. Uh, over here, you can see the design for the hedges of this section of the formal garden, along with the placement of the ornamental trees. And the same is done on the back here. All right, so we have the foundation back here for another small pavilion, which we're going to skip for now in favor of the last formal garden on the side here, which if I give you a top-down view, you can see the design of that there, along with the foundation for one of these statues on the back here. And these are, should be a seven by seven with some ferns placed on either side there, along with their ornamental trees. All right, let us uh, go over here and take a look at this here. So this is going to be the formal garden that is edging out the back courtyard. And you're doing that again with leaves and tree trunks, as you see done here. And there are also spaced in some double ferns back here as well, according to these patterns here. Uh, if you want to place the ferns differently, you can. These are just suggested places. Uh, let us uh, go over here and look at uh, this small square here. As you can see, you're just filling it in with leaves and a tree base and a couple of ferns here in the middle. And you're doing the same thing again for this section of this formal garden here. And of course, on the side here, there is the uh, leaf sections here on both sides of the main house, as well as here at the front behind the main fountain as well. All right, I think let us now look at the foundation for the first pavilion that is going to be out front here. So, as you can see, here is a, a top-down view. We have the stairwell section over here, as well as, as the main body of the room. And uh, you should have the measurements from these, from the pathways. On either side here, there are three blocks there and three blocks over here. And as you can see, this should be very tightly bounded by the formal garden measurements that we have already made. So let me give you a view and description of the foundation. Now the lower parts of this is going to be a ledge of cobblestone stairs that will go all the way around. And on top of those, you want to put upside down cobblestone stairs, but you're only doing that or it looks like uh, six blocks there. And then we're going uh, back three blocks here and two blocks on the side here to cut it in there because we have uh, cutouts for the window sections on the lower floors here. And below here you want to have upside down uh, stairs that cut in with that as well. And some andesite on the sections in there. And then you want to go along here and make another six blocks, cut in a block, then go three blocks, then two blocks again. And this pattern is going to be repeating every time all the way around the building as you see done here. So I think you can follow that repeating pattern as is described there. You also want to leave a five block wide section for the main door here and this is going to be in line with the five block wide pathway that we've been constructing over here by the way and it goes straight through the building on the other side as well. Uh, the only thing let's talk about is on the inside here you want to then put in some baseboarding of spruce tree trunks, uh, right side up here, and the bottom of the spruce stairwell, as you see done here, with some chiseled stone bricks and some doors arranged along 
there. All right, so let now that I've described that, let me go back here, talk about this smaller pavilion. So the bays of this building, I don't think we can quite see them. This, the one I just described to you is five bays long, but the one behind here is going to be three bays long. But they are both two blocks, uh, two bays wide, meaning that uh, that uh, these sections here, this would be considered a bay, by the way. So that's two of those. And there's going to be one, two, and three of those there. So you want to follow the same design as you did for the foundation up there for that first pavilion and just make a shorter one back here. And the same design applies for the stairway back here as well. So let me give you a good top-down view of uh, this section here. And do your best to build it out according to these patterns. All right, with uh, that done, I think we should start probably back here on the glass pavilion. Um, the cobble and diorite should be high contrast enough that I don't need to give you the block measurements. But as you can see, the basis of the columns here, they're all going to be sort of a, a cross of a three by three blocks there with an intercolumation distance of uh, two blocks along there for the floors and one block at the front and the back there as well. And you can also see the positions of the planters for the double ferns at this phase as well. So you want to build five columns on the sides and four columns on the front and the back. And from there, you want to then start arcing the columns around, as you see done here. I think perhaps I should measure some of this out there from those reference points there to help you get uh, those distances correct. And you want to continue building out the column bases, as you see done here. You're leaving about a two block gap around those and the back garden wall, by the way. And you're constructing those in pairs. In other words, from around here, you want to be leaving one block of distance, but over here you're leaving three. And you want to do that for a certain number of columns until you get all the way over here where you would be building a uh, seventh column over here, except this is now going to be the edge of the back of the house itself, which we're going to be doing with some more upside down cobblestone stairs, as you see done there. And around the edges of the pool, you can begin constructing some of the braziers, as you see done here with some cobblestone and some cobblestone walls. All right, I think I should probably give you some measurements at this point for the house itself. Because this is going to be the main centerpiece of the entire mega base area that you are constructing. So we're going to have to spend a bit of time on the measurements for the foundation of the house. All right, for the support foundation for what is going to be the front portico of the house, that triangular section there, you should have some measurements back here from the back of the nether rack and the garden walls and everything. So it looks like there's going to be about uh, six blocks there and uh, another what six blocks over that section, and then a three block wide bay here. Two more blocks, probably what, six blocks here, then three in the middle, and so on and so forth until you get to the other side. You're following the same foundation pattern over there that we laid out, uh, but on the back here, you cut your cobblestone upside down stairs in three blocks here, but then you just run a line of straight cobblestone all the way around till you get to the other side over here as well. So when you've done that, you want to leave a three block wide pathway of andesite here in the middle. And then you want to start building in the stairs 
for uh, leading up to the main, uh, the lower ground floor over here. So we count uh, three blocks here, then two blocks of stone bricks there, and then run a line of stone brick stairs, as you see done there, with some cobblestone behind them, three blocks deep that way. And then behind those, you can then layer in some stone bricks there, as you see done along here, because these are going to be the uh, main foundations for the walls of the uh, house itself. So uh, let's, um, let's go over here, take a look at the edges here. So once you extend this back, you then want to cut this in for another three block wide bay. And then six blocks again, another three block wide bay here. Six blocks there, then turn a corner, go six blocks, add another bay here, another span here that uh, looks like it collides with the archway here, by the way. But we have another bay here, uh, what would be another six block thing here, but it's cut off by some more of the diorite. A bay here, a six block span here, turn the corner, six blocks again, a three block wide bay, and then over here as well, we are constructing an, uh, what is going to be an, a secondary entrance into the back here, which you are doing with some cobblestone stairs here, then cobblestone here, and then more stairs here, and then cobblestone back there, and I believe the door is going to be sitting right there. Once you have done that, make this uh, three blocks wide here and turn the corner and go outwards, uh, connecting this section here. And you're going six blocks, you're turning again, you're going four blocks back this way, and then you're turning yet again. And you're running over here to where you would collide with the column that you should have already constructed. And from there, you then want to turn and go. This way, how many blocks is that going to be? It's going to be 11 blocks that way. And you want to put in some cobblestone stairs, some chiseled stone bricks, and cobblestone stairs here, arranged by uh, these measurements there. I think if we come through along about here, we should see the center line of the building. It should be uh, right through there. All right. So this now gives us half of the perimeter of the main house, and you want to construct the other side of that exactly as you have done already. And I think you can see from here all the positions of the bases of the columns and the potted ferns, as well as the lower course of the house itself. And from the checkerboard floor, you should be able to see the numbering and dimensions of those. You can see in the middle here, some of it is filled with uh, extra bedrock or stone bricks or cobblestone, and that's because that has walls sitting on top of it, so you don't, you don't see that in the build. But I think if I go over here and zoom in, you can see all the measurements counted out nicely for you in the checkerboard pattern there. You want to do that on both sides and then just straight fill in the middle with the entire pattern there or whichever floor pattern you intend to use for the ground floor. But I'm afraid that's all the time we have for part one of the tutorial. I know we've only covered two phases but we did have a lot of uh, explanation to get started with. And according to my timer, it's been quite a while, and I've, I've kind of approached the ability of as long as I can talk for, by the way, so we, we have to cut it here for that reason as well. But remember, as always, the entire world I'm showing to you here today, along with all of its phases, is available for download in the video description in case uh, what I'm giving to you here is not good enough to help you reconstruct the base. I think between the tutorial as a companion and the download world, you should be able to do it. But I've had this particular base requested a lot, so I'm trying to go through and give you everything that you need in order to make it. So for the 2 or 3% of you that actually watch all the way to the end of the video, 
Thank you very, very much, and I will see you next time.